Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. When it comes to video files, there are a lot of file formats out there. If you're a video editor or a media enthusiast, you've probably encountered a veritable alphabet soup of different ones. So just like in our episodes on audio and image formats, which you can check out up here, we're going to demystify some of the common formats that you can choose for your newfangled moving picture movies. First up, to avoid confusion, it's important to keep in mind that the extension you see at the end of a file name, such as MP4 or MKV or MOV, actually specifies what kind of container the file is in. But there's more to formats than just the container, so all those video clips and trailers that you got could be using any number of different codecs as well. But what's a codec? Glad you asked. Most digital video is compressed in some way, since otherwise it'd take up tons of space on your hard drive. A codec is simply a particular scheme that's used to compress or decompress a file. There are lots of codecs out there, but one of the most prevalent ones today is H.264, which is popular because it retains decent image quality while shrinking the file sizes significantly. The way it works is by, instead of saving each frame of the video pixel by pixel, H.264 splits frames into blocks of 256 pixels each and tries to predict what each subsequent block will look like based on either the rest of the frame or from previous frames. The algorithm then compares the predicted block to the actual block, creating a difference called a residual. Next, the codec compares the residual to 16 checkerboard-like standard patterns, and how much of each pattern contributes to the residual is stored as a number, with higher frequency patterns you see to the lower right often discarded, as these take up the most space. This is really similar to how JPEG works for still images, and like JPEG, you can choose how much compression you want with higher compression discarding more patterns and yielding smaller file sizes but also lower quality. However, H.264 is actually pretty good at making predictions and even includes a filter to reduce some of the compression blockiness you sometimes see on low quality video, making it a standard go-to codec for sites like YouTube as well as for Blu-ray discs. At similar visual quality, H.264 only takes up about half as much space as MPEG-2, which is still in use today for DVD video and broadcast TV. But a new codec, the imaginatively named H.265, better known as HEVC, is even more efficient than H.264. It can use blocks of up to 4,096 pixels and has more advanced prediction algorithms, which is critical for keeping file sizes manageable as internet streaming continues on its inevitable march towards 8K. Of course, one downside to both H.264 and 265 is that they're protected by patents. So companies that want to use these codecs have to pay royalties. That seems to be the motivation behind the development of VP8 and VP9, a pair of open source standards being pushed by Google that are technologically quite similar to HEVC. There are image quality differences, but there's no real consensus as to which one is better. So some service providers like Netflix just use whichever codec will work best on the device the user's watching from. There are other codecs floating around there, like the venerable AVI, but at this point, we've covered the major modern ones. So let's get back to container files, starting with the familiar MP4. MP4 enjoys wide compatibility and can hold either an MPEG or an H.264 encoded video, along with an AAC or MP3 audio stream. Pro tip, if you ever see M4V at the end of a video, it's basically just a version of MP4 with DRM enabled. So if one of these files refuses to play, try simply changing the extension to MP4 and give it another go. But although MP4 is still really popular, especially among YouTubers, the Matroska or MKV container is one of the fastest growing. It can support just about any combination of audio and video codecs, including newer ones like H.265, and has more flexible support for menus and chapters, as well as the ability to play back a corrupted file, so you won't necessarily lose all of that super important drone footage of your boring neighborhood. And for creative types, there are many other formats that you might encounter, each with their own advantages and drawbacks. 
For example, the MOV format, which was developed by Apple for QuickTime, supports multiple codecs and is easier to edit on the fly without having to rewrite the entire file when you're done. A cool feature that makes exporting a finished video from Final Cut much faster than competing video editors that have to encode the entire project from scratch. Finally, we can't wrap this video up without talking about FLV and F4V. These indicate, of course, that the clip is meant to be played in Adobe Flash, which is being phased out. <laughs> now, you know I'd love to tell you all about that, but we're out of time. So go and watch the video that we already made about it. And be sure to yell at us down in the comments if we neglected the file video format of your choice. Juggling multiple computers is difficult. You end up with various sets of mice and keyboards on your desk, which not only looks messy, but gets super confusing. KVM switches can partially solve this problem, but we found that they aren't very seamless and are sometimes cumbersome. But with Synergy, you can move the mouse seamlessly between your computers, which makes them feel like one computer. Check out the full details at the link below. So thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like the video, dislike it if you have to, leave a comment for what we should do in future videos, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I said subscribe already. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, leave a comment for ideas of what we should do in future videos. Subscribe, follow, see you later.